Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief Spartan 117. Welcome to Quality Time, the KO Koala Entertainment Podcast. Mm-hmm. Anthony and Skyler will take it from here. Master Chief, out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll edit this out, but Cobalt, uh, our game is uh, NBA 2K22. That's what we're making. Hope you like it. That's the game. That's it. It's sport. (laughs) Yep. Anyway, hello and welcome to Koality Time, the KO Koala Entertainment Podcast. I'm Skylar Sokol. I am Anthony Nicolosi. And we are here today to discuss the hot shit on the market, Cyberpunk 2077. I have been, I took two days off of work to play it. It came out on Wednesday at 5 p.m. our time. So it took a little while to get the day one patch in and all the shit. So I started playing around 6, 6 6.15 and... I am currently have 18 and a half hours clocked. Yeah, look at Skyler. He hasn't shaved or anything. He's a fucking freak. He's I just never nonstop <laughs> cyberpunking. It's true. <laughs> and honestly, it's not just because I knew the podcast was coming. Uh, so That's good. Yeah, That's good. Just to start this I off, have- so basically the format of this podcast is going to be Anthony. He's going to sort of interview me on my experience since he hasn't played it. Um, my goal with this, uh, episode is no narrative spoilers. I'll give essentially zero narrative spoilers at all. There may be some gameplay and mechanics kind of like stuff that I talk about, obviously. And if you think that that's a spoiler, then that may be a spoiler for you, but I will not spoil anything narratively. And if I do, it'll be very vague and like just to illustrate a point, not to like reveal anything just so people know I'm very spoiler sensitive. So I wouldn't do that to people. (laughs) Cool. Well, and uh, we've done we've done this format a few times when we interviewed Skylar on Valorant. Uh, Skylar just tends to play a fuck ton of games, which is a good thing for a person to do. And so, uh, <laughs> getting his input on it. Uh, in addition to this, I was going to say we have uh, we've been messaged quite a bit across our social media channels on people asking if they should pick it up. So I think interesting. To some extent, this this will hopefully be an answer for some of those people. Um, well, okay. Let me start asking you questions by first saying, probably if you're watching this, if you're listening to this podcast, you are likely aware of some controversy surrounding like technical issues. I'm going to save that kind of stuff till maybe the very end. I don't want to necessarily focus on that uh, for this podcast. I oh, want interesting. To okay. Focus on on your experience. So. Uh, Let's just start high level experience. Have you enjoyed it so far and dive into whatever part of the experience you may want to. So far, I have enjoyed it extremely. Um, It is, in my opinion, it's definitely the most engaging open world RPG I've ever played. Um, And you know me, I'm ADHD as fuck. So like open world RPGs are rough for me. So to come at. Yeah, go ahead. Keep going. To be able to play it. You know, for 18 and a half hours or whatever over th- two days is like very rare for me. And it, it takes a special kind of experience for that, for me to be immersed like that. So, what is it that's keeping you engaged? Is it that there's really solid, frequent pacing of like side things? Is it that, you know, because I, uh, I saw some amount of footage from somebody playing on a higher end PC. Um, and have to say that some of the environments are like really, you know, beautiful or like just really well done, you know, yeah. night city, just like that in itself can probably engage you to some extent. Right. Just so I think that does to some degree, but honestly, I haven't noticed that as much as like, for example, when I played Bioshock infinite, like the environments played a huge role in my enjoyment of the game. This um, like they're immersive, but I wouldn't say that like I'm riding around looking for like shit to look at that I think is cool, like beautiful or cool, uh, which I did do in Bioshock, interestingly enough. That's not to say that the environments aren't really well detailed and modeled and that like there aren't the coolest thing. Like the thing I've noticed the most is the variety of people you see. 
and just like how many different people designs there are and like the different gangs that you experience all have different like clothing stylistic elements and i think there's like 16 different gangs or some crazy amount so like there's a huge number a huge amount of variety in just the character design and that is something i've definitely noticed okay so is it then if it's not necessarily some of the uh setting and environment oh yeah i was answering what engaged me right yeah i think it's um one is the theme and the setting like this cyberpunk futuristic sci-fi tech theme is really appealing to me personally and um the fact that the hacking mechanics in the game are so good like the best i've ever played basically like what i always wanted watchdogs hacking mechanics to feel like um that has been one of the biggest engaging factors in the game for me. Um, Can you break down maybe an example of one of those hacking mechanics? Yeah. I saw somebody else like allude to it in one of their review videos, but yeah. So basically, how the hacking works? Oh my god, Noki is being a little shit. Cat attack! Ugh! Ugh, cat. Uh, basically, how the hacking mechanics work is you have this like cyberware uh, implant that you can uh. Ass- equip hacks to and those are called quick hacks there's also another type of hacking called breach protocol um and so basically here let me start a little simpler really quick the overall the way the character progression works in the game is that you have five stats you have intelligence body reflex technical ability and cool cool like how cool you are (laughs) that's the stat what the stat is called it actually relates to stealth you more cool does that mean what having a huge dick in the game no it does not cool. affect your cool actually okay. yeah okay. um unlike in real life so uh <laughs> okay so you have those five stats, so yeah okay and then within each of those stats there is a perk tree so there's like two to three perks per stat like in intelligence there's quick hacking and breach protocol in cool there's stealth and this thing called cold blood in like reflexes there's assault weapons pistol weapons and something else and in each of those perks there is a tech tree of upgrades you can get relating to that perk with that have like 20 different upgrades in them that you can level up um that give various benefits okay so So hacking is one of the intelligence so in intelligence there's two different perk trees and both of them relate to hacking there's something called breach protocol which is where you, um, when you start a fight, you can do this breach protocol, which applies like general stuff to everything, like reduces the cost of your hacking, uh, the number of RAM you use for your hacking um, on things. It also can like disable all the camera systems, stuff like that. And then the quick hacking is like the real meat of the hacking where you're like directly inter- engaging with objects. So the way it works is you have this scan feature in your optic implants and Um, basically you hold down tab or whatever, toggle it, and you can see all the hackable objects in the environment. So there's a bunch of devices you can act like, for example, if you see a security camera, you can highlight that security camera and it'll give you a bunch of options for what you can do. You can run ping, which will show you like all the hackable devices on it, on the network, um, and like reveal them through walls and whatever you can run. Um, you can disengage, disable the camera just to make it not function so it won't see you because cameras will reveal you if you're trying to be stealthy. They'll also enemy hack net runners is what they're called can hack you through the cameras. So it's good so to you can get hacked? right. So if they can see you, they can apply hacks to you and damage you and stuff. Um, so you might want to disable it. You can also turn it to friendly mode, which will make it so it doesn't detect you, but it'll still like behave as normal. You can also make it distract enemies, which will make it like do something weird so that enemies will get distracted by it. You can also take control of it and like use it to look around at stuff and go through the camera systems. And once you're in a camera, you can then use that camera to like look at other objects and whatever. So like every, there's tons of objects in every environment that allow this. There's like lights that you can mess with. There's like vending machines. Uh, there's like, automatic crate like forklifts that you can like make crates fall off of like i made some crates fall on some dude and it was sick um but in addition to all of that all the people have like these cybernetic enhancements right so you can also Mm -hmm. hack the people and you can do ping like if you ping a person it'll like reveal all the people in the room to you um if you you can you can hack that you can hack and just shoot or see or stealth or whatever um because everyone is hackable because everyone in this society has at least some degree of cybernetic enhancement. Um, okay. So 
all these quick hacks, there's like a huge variety of them. My favorite that I've used lately is called Reboot Optics because I've been trying to do some stealthy stuff lately. Um, not that uh, I don't like the gunplay. It's more that I just like have been trying to do some stealthy stuff. I basically stealth till I get caught and then I do a bunch of shooting. And that's like my, <laughs> my gameplay loop. But, um, but Reboot Optics basically reboots the person's like eye implants so they can't see for a period of time. So you can like reboot a dude's optics, sneak by him. Uh, kill his friend and then go behind him and kill him while his, until, before his optics have rebooted. Um, and that, so that's sick. crazy, dude. That 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 system sounds <laughs> PTSD as fuck. I can't. I I do. You have any notion of how many people worked on this game uh, by chance? I assume a fuck ton. Yeah, it's gotta a be metric a metric fuck, fuck ton. That, that that just that hacking system, dude. It just seems like you need a. <laughs> small student every time i go to like a new mission area like a major mission area because there's the map is enormous right i just like started a mission where i'm going to this like huge mall or something just like this area alone and like this small sequence seems like it needs a small studio like every single like little chunk of the game you play you're like this could be a it's an entire game right like I didn't even see the title screen of the game until eight and a half hours into the game Hmm. eight and a half or nine that's when i finished the first like major mission um and i wasn't like going slow i was doing just like what i could and that's how long it takes and then you get the title screen that's crazy dude right to have a game that knows it's gonna hold you for long enough that it doesn't even show you the title screen until well, longer that... than like normal games no yeah that i mean just generally just all the things you're describing sounds like so much i mean okay so hold on we haven't talked about the gunplay right the gun so that play? was all hacking that's all i talked about yeah. there and there's so much more right so the gunplay is great i love it a lot of people have been complaining that the enemies feel like bullet sponges and it's not like a cl like a twitch shooter game where you headshot a guy and he's dead guaranteed it definitely doesn't play like that you can get guns that might do that and you can get gun perks that get you to that point but it doesn't start that way they definitely it's like destiny right where they take a lot of damage um mm -hmm. but the guns feel really good to shoot and there's a, some really interesting gun mechanics there's different types of weapons tech weapons power weapons smart weapons etc um, tech weapons are, have been my favorite. They can like do a charge shot and they can shoot people through light cover. So, um, even if someone's like high and by the way, there's an automatic cover system in the game that works so well. Like, you know, like, what do you most, mean automatic cover? like you just crouch behind a box and you're like automatically in cover behind oh, the box. Okay. And when okay. you like aim, your character will automatically aim out. You like stand next to a wall and you try and aim and your character will lean out automatically. It just like works so naturally. I don't even like notice it's there and covers really important to the gunplay because you die easily if you're like out in the open. So it works really well. But anyway, so tech weapons can shoot people like through like cover when you do a charge shot with them. There's smart weapons, which like automatically aim at enemies. I haven't even used those yet because you need a specific type of hand uh, cybernetic implant to smart link with your optical implant so that you can like choose where the bullets go. Um, it's crazy. Uh, and the guns feel good. And there's a huge variety, too. Um, there's like pistols, they're like single shot rifles, sniper rifles, assault weapons, all different types of shotguns, tons of different types of grenades, just like a bunch. Well, how much, how much time would you say you spend shooting in that game? Like oh, a lot. Yeah. You do? yeah. Yeah. There's at least one shooting part in every mid. I mean, unless you're doing stealth, right? You could in theory fully stealth through a mission and never shoot a gun a single time, or you can put silencers on the guns and, um, and shoot from stealth and if you have your stuff that's right you'll instant kill people potentially so that's one way you might shoot in a stealth situation but in general yeah i shoot all the time what about though um let's i guess another kind of question like map traversal so i've uh -huh. seen a lot of people driving around in cool looking cars yep how much time do you spend traversing around so you actually have an option here, right? Like I have enjoyed driving around. It's like GTA where there's a bunch of different radio stations with different music. So I like okay. listening to those. Um, the driving for me is pretty satisfying. It's fun to go fast. Um, but there's fast travel everywhere. So if you, you can go to these fast travel points and fast travel like wherever you need. So if you didn't like the traversal, you could fast travel wherever you wanted. Um, I've so far have just driven. And basically I look at all my missions at, at any time you have like one to three main missions and like 20 to 30 side missions you can do. So wait, say that again. One to three main missions, 20 to 30 side missions. Right. 
um, not necessarily things you would do at the time, but and they cover the entire map, right? So you, you're, it's not like they're close by it necessarily. But do you usually, have any notion of how far you are in the game after twenty-ish hours? I imagine that I am maybe a quarter of the way through, maybe. Holy fuck! Are you doing side stuff then? I do some side stuff, but I feel like I've kept up with the main missions pretty well. Damn. Yeah, because I, I mean, I, mean I, just, I think the estimated time for the game is like 100 to 200 hours. So, but just the primary mission? Uh huh. Really? Okay. I, maybe I misread a, this. I was reading a review beforehand just to be somewhat acquainted uh -huh. with some things, and they were saying they felt it was like 20 to 40 hours main, and then oh. like 100 ish for with side. So, I, interesting. That well, was maybe them. Well, that, I mean, that would be cool. That's fine. I mean, you know, I don't mind short experiences, right? Uh, but so far, it's been <laughs> yeah, so engaging. Short. 20 yeah. to 40 no, is this, long. Yeah, that's what I mean. But short from an yeah. open world RPG perspective, yeah, 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 at yeah, least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's better for me, honestly. But uh, but the side, <laughs> another. Shorter? Yeah, exactly. Another great thing about the game is the design of the side missions is great. Like, in a lot of games, the side missions feel really like, why am I doing this? It's just some dumb, repetitive thing. In this game, like, the, some of the side missions have been as interesting if not more interesting than the main missions and like they have their own stories they're like pretty well uh they're well designed and very interesting missions on their own right like one of them there there's like this car service that's run by an ai that's basically uber run by an ai and their cars are malfunctioning you gotta go figure out why and so here's a narrative spoiler just for everyone listening to for a side mission so if you don't want to hear it skip ahead like 30 seconds but Basically, I got to one of the malfunctioning cars and it was like on at, like next to a cliff and it was like and the the AI in it started talking to me and it was like um are you here to like to disable me and I was like no, I'm like here to help you like get back on the network or whatever, the car network. And then the car was like no, I don't think so. And it like inched towards the edge of the cliff like it was going to like jump off. It's like I think I'm going to end it all. And basically I just had like a full uh, like suicide negotiation to help this car like not decide to like <laughs> roll off a cliff this like ai controlled car it was funny. funny it was it was great yeah what do you think um i know you don't want to do the, any narrative spoilers and you don't need to just generally what do you think about the narrative so far is it engaged you you said you're interested in the premise the cyberpunky yeah. You know, futuristic premise. Is it delivering for you? Is it going beyond expectations? Yeah, I think it's really cool. I've actually really enjoyed the narrative so far. And all of the main missions have felt very main mission-y in that they're, like, pretty large scale. And there's some very cool set pieces, like, where you're, like, navigating, like, weird robots that you wouldn't be interacting with otherwise. Like, the set pieces that occur in the main missions are very satisfying. And, like, the story beats have been interesting and the pacing has been cool and like i'm at a point now where i'm like trying to figure a specific thing out and i've got like three different like whole main mission chains to go down to get information about it and i feel like very free to do whichever one is the most interesting to me right now i'm interacting with a gang called the voodoo boys that like talk in like a cajun french dialect and <laughs> they're super sick i i've been really i just like about that's who i'm doing this mall thing for and i i'm excited i'm like about to do that mission so okay cool uh music what's how's the what how's the audio design are you enjoying audio um, i guess that's not fair that's like two sections there's the audio and then there's the music yeah. well, how's the audio design in the game i think the audio you know design is like great like audio. the guns sound good um the hacking sounds cool like i haven't i haven't had any specific audio design complaints at all in the game honestly um it's actually really interesting like i saw a thing on an article where someone was like you can turn off background conversation text but i've had so many moments where i've just been like walking down the street and then these like people are like having a conversation that i listen in on that's actually like a really interesting conversation just about some <laughs> random shit in the universe um so okay. just some of the audio has been great and um yeah the driving sounds no, no, the audio all sounds good i noticed like when I, I sat down and like you know one of those like dentist chairs that have like the cracked like foam basically or whatever they look like mm -hmm. i think so the I sound of me fun. sitting in it was like perfect i was like they recorded the fuck out of someone sitting in one of those chairs <laughs> for sure i was like anthony would have appreciated this sound for <laughs> sure okay so audio design's good what about music does music is music uh, entirely 
environmental, you know? Like No, so this is a very classic, like, you know, uh, AAA kind of music design where, like, you know, you go at open world design where you start combat and then the music starts bumping kind of thing. Or, like, you okay. have music during the intense parts of, like, narrative cutscenes and whatever. We should talk about how the cutscenes are designed and stuff, too. Remind me. Okay. But, and the dialogue, because that's a huge part of this game, right, is the, the way the narrative is presented. But, um. But yeah, the music's good. The only the real music I've noticed the most is just when I'm driving around and there's like 10 radio stations you can choose from. There's like a metal station, a rock station, a few techno stations. There's a jazz station. There's like a rap, a few rap stations. It's pretty sick. Like I I've, yeah, I've cool. like switched between like all of them and ha- that is has made driving super enjoyable honestly because there's a bunch of cool tracks. <laughs> okay, so the driving music maybe has stood out to you the most. People are referencing in chat the music in the bars. Is the music in the bars particularly good? Uh, I mean, I, I remember going – the coolest music I've had in the game so far was I, just now in this Voodoo, Voodoo Boys thing. I went to this chapel, and they were having a funeral, and there was this, like, super bassy, like, fucking trap beat playing. That was sick. But in, I, I went into, like, a bar just before that was like <clears> – <throat> you know like the classic <laughs> that the i don't know there, it's been there's been a big variety i guess is one thing i can say about the music like different places you go and different areas of the city engage in different sort of music that's cool that's cool okay so then let's talk about cutscenes and dial yeah which one do you want to hit first well so i thought it was interesting right because this game touted a lot about their character creation right um and how that was a big deal you can customize your genitalia um <laughs> which you can, but the character the character creation like wasn't as crazy as I necessarily expected. It wasn't like sliders everywhere for everything. It was it was I, but you can create very unique characters in it still. And the irony is I have seen my character's face twice since <laughs> I started playing the game. Both times when I looked in a mirror for some reason. The beginning of the game you start by looking in a mirror and then randomly in one quest I had to wash my face and my character looked in the mirror. That was that's it. That's the only two times I've seen my character. So I really could care less about the character customization at that point, right? Like it actually doesn't matter. Um, and uh, so anyway, so all the cutscenes are first person because I had a theory that maybe the cutscenes were going to have some third person stuff, and right. that's why it was going to matter. Nope, they're, oh, they're all, in first, all person. first person, all free moving too. Generally, like you can literally just walk away from someone while they're talking, and they'll be like, "Hey, where are you going?" Or whatever, and you can go back and continue the conversation, or you can literally just like walk away in a lot of circumstances. Um, okay. So they're very free flowing, and then the dialogue—you have a bunch of choices all the time. Um, choices based on like how good your stats are. You can get additional dialogue options. Also, at the beginning of the game, you pick a background nomad, corpo, or street uh, rat, or something, and based on that, you get additional dialogue choices. Um, and it's been great, honestly. The choices have felt like unique and usually there's like a choice that is what I want to say. There's also like main voice lines that are delineated by yellow. And then there's like blue voice lines that are like, you can have additional conversations or additional conversations trees to go down if you want to. So it's well designed. Like if you're someone who wants to just like breeze through the dialogue and just hear the main stuff, you totally can. If you're someone wants to get all the information, you also totally can. And I'm assuming, right, like, obviously different dialogue options could change the course of the game. Right? Uh, there are some cho- some situations where you make choices that appear to do that for sure. Um, okay. Like I, there, so one of the most interesting things was I was playing the game and I was talking to Sean about his experience in a specific section um, where there's this, like, big mercenary angry dude talking to you about this thing you're trying to get from him. And... Uh, at one point you're with a friend and your friend gets a little heated with the guy and the guy's like, Hey, sit down on the couch. And you can like, you have like a timed dialogue choice where you need to make a decision in a specific amount of time. Um, I told my friend to calm down and got him to sit down, but Sean just let the time run out. Cause he was like, I'm not going to fucking tell my friend what to do. And when Sean let the time run out, his friend like attacked the dude and the dude attacked and they got in this huge gunfight and they had this huge fight with this guy and they killed him. Right. Okay. Um, I told my friend to sit down and then a whole new guy came out of the back, talked to me, this guy who like runs this place. And then eventually he threatened me with like a Mexican gun standoff. And I had the choice to either like say, all right, here's your money or just like shoot him in the throat. Um, 
and I, I shot him in the throat, and then we had, like, a whole gunfight and whatever. But then, later, but in Sean's case, he never even saw that guy until the okay. very end of that mission where he fought that guy in, like, a robot mech or something. <laughs> and I never even saw that because I killed the guy, like, in the dialogue at the beginning. Interesting. That's cool. Right? Yeah, that, that sounds... Uh... I don't even want to think about having to implement all these I, various scenarios. I get thoughts about it, like while I'm playing. Sometimes, like how the fuck, like that's why I'm saying, like they're even each individual little chunk feels like a studio alone could have made just that in like right, a yeah. year. I mean, that's what it sounds like. I mean, you know, Jesse Shells talks about in the Art of Game Design, right? Book of Lenses for those who are listening. He talks about that, like. like linear narratives open narratives you know narratives with options and he he says like don't be fooled at least for now until ai can help us out with some procedural generation of compelling you know uh, content on that front that's accurate to experiences that we want to make um that's that's just a bunch of linear <laughs> it seems like you have options and different things can happen, but the designers have to essentially design every path. Yeah, you know? and so crazy. there's definitely some illusion of choice, right? Like, especially in minor dialogue options. But clearly, there's some non-illusion of choice, too, if that mission played out in those two pretty distinct ways. Right, right. Um, <laughs> by the way, I just looked it up. 500 people a- about worked on the game. Shit, man. I would have thought more. Yeah, I honestly. mean, it took like seven years, though, to develop, right, or something? That's true. That's true. Seven or eight. Yeah, years. yeah, Evan. But I'm not giving narrative spoilers, so I'm not going to say that name on the podcast. By the way, we're live on Twitch. I'm I'm interacting with the Twitch chat. Yes, if you want to check it out, we uh, are live every usually every Monday at eight p.m. eight thirty p.m. Eastern. This week was an exception because of Cyberpunk. It's actually going to be an exception next week too because we have some guests that oh, uh, will yeah. be on Wednesday. That's right. Anyway, we'll but, talk more about yeah, that at the end. Anyway, yeah, back to Cyberpunk. Um, are there any other game beats? I, I do want to ask you about your technical experience because that has been a thing yeah. that's come out a lot. But um, one more gameplay there thing. You want to talk about first. Yeah. So you have. So in addition to all the systems I've mentioned, there's also a crafting system in the game. You can disassemble weapons. You can build quick hacks. Build weapons. You can make. There's weapon mods and attachments. Like scopes are not default on weapons. Like weapons default have the iron sights, and you have to either craft scopes or find them to put on the weapons. There's also attachments like silencers and other shit um there's also mods for armor in addition to all of that you have your cyberware your cybernetic implants and there's like a whole skeleton of them like you have ocular implants you have arm implants you have leg implants you have like nervous system implants you have like all like i think there's probably like nine or ten different categories of implants um that you can buy that do all different things there's like blades you can get for your arms there's like um double jump you can get for your legs there's um there's something that like slows down time when you're sliding if you like run and slide it'll slow down time for you um so just in there there's a whole nother like system of like crazy customization so the amount of like progression and customization is crazy and i'm actually like hoping i get enough points to do everything i want because all the trees and all the benefits are so interesting there's this one of the perk trees is called cold blood i mentioned it earlier it's in the cool category it's literally a whole tree that's about getting consecutive enemy kills and it basically like all the upgrades benefit this thing called cold blood which you get when you kill an enemy and it stacks up the more enemies you kill in sequence and like the default one just increases your move speed by like two percent for every enemy you kill but you can get all different stuff like reduce your weapon recoil make your hacks re uh refresh faster etc that are all built into this one cold blood perk tree i feel like just doing that perk tree would be super interesting and every tree yeah. is like that there's like a blade tree just for like swords there's a tree just for fist fighting there's trees for hacking like i mentioned there's trees for crafting trees for like using grenades like so you you see all this and you're not just completely overwhelmed you there's so much shit you're telling me i'm like god i don't it's, it's it seems like like so much stuff i can't i won't be able to handle yeah so know, i think if you're trying to the beauty of this being a single player game is that I'm not trying to optimize everything, right? I'm not trying to min-max and have, like, the best damage build, right? I'm just like, this seems cool. Let's just fucking do it, right? And I just, basically, that's all I do. I'm like, this seems cool. Let's go for it. I'm not trying to, like, regret any decisions or, like, be too, like, deci- be too 
an- an- analytical about it. And I think if you play like that, it doesn't feel too overwhelming. But it definitely can, right? Like, the even just the decision of where to put your attribute points is a hard decision. And actually, I generally just hoard them until I get into a situation or dialogue where I see a thing that's like, if you have this many points in this attribute, you can do it. Because right then, you can put points in the attribute and have enough to do whatever the thing is. Like, if you need nine technical ability to open this door, then I'll put my points in. That's like how I've been deciding where I put my points because it is hard to decide. But the more points you put into an attribute, the more of the perk trees within that attribute you unlock so um and a hard i just decision. feel like i'm i'm like uh, some games that i have played with for example even something with like really simple perk trees like i the original ori for example uh-huh. super simple right yeah i i get like ocd about that one of the legs is going too much farther be in front of the other one you know well, and luckily like, these are in independent back. menus so maybe you'll be okay but <laughs> but yeah i just basically was like i want to do hacking hacking sounds fun so i started putting points in it, and i was like i want to do some crafting so i put some points there right i'm not like i'm not like yeah. thinking about yeah, yeah, every yeah. single one i did look through all of them a little bit but yeah um it's not too bad for me but i totally think there are people who would be who could be overwhelmed by it especially depending on your approach I also just realized I didn't even mention one of my favorite systems in the game. After sure. all, all the systems we mentioned, I didn't even mention this one. So in addition to all of these attribute points and perk points that you can put into these trees, there is also a system where just by doing the stuff within the trees, like just by getting a stealth kill, you get stealth experience. And those... Um, those things level up on their own as well. In addition to the perk points you put into them, the individual perk perks level up in addition to the attributes, which you have to put points in as well. So like, and then as those level up, you those are how you get perk points. And they also passively improve those things anyway. So you could not, put, I have put zero points into my assault weapons, zero points into my pistols, but they've leveled up a fuck ton because I've used them a lot. So they're like recoil is better. The reload time is faster, all that shit. And I haven't had to even put points into it which is so nice. So it just feels like just by doing things, you get benefits in those things. You don't have to commit to any of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely just trying to wrap my head around all of the things, like in a holistic package kind of thing and imagine sort of playing that. I'm like, what the fuck? There's so much shit. Yeah. I sort um, of just like fly by the seat of my pants. Um, I, and just yeah, do I, it when I'm doing it. About- I'm probably I'm not really the target market for definitely like definitely this. not, dude. No, but, but like I could see that if you were, you know, if you, especially if uh, Master Animus was making a comment in chat, like this seems almost like real world. Like if you really wanted to just get lost in another world, like it seems like this is giving you Ab- what you absolutely. Need. And I think honestly, if I took like the first major mission I did, the the like one right before the title screen. And I just put you in it at the beginning of that mission. I think you would love it, right? Like the individual short missions and the like, those kinds of things. I think you would really enjoy. Um, and those are so well done, right? And it's just all the other open world RPG stuff that might you might not enjoy, right, but right, like right. the individual set pieces. I think you would really love. Yeah, yeah. From from what I've watched, um, I can see what you're saying on that front. Like, yeah, it could it could uh, be enjoyable. Now, uh, one part of having an immersive experience is having like a solid technical experience as well. For you, it's been good? It's been fine. I've seen a couple bugs. So let's see. I... I got I was in a mission where I talked to a dude and then it didn't register that I was done talking to him. Um, I just exited to main menu and loaded back in. Right. Like I saved, exited to main menu, reloaded that same save and it fixed itself. Um, that's okay. the biggest bug I've encountered by far. Um, other than that, it's been relatively clean. I've seen like a couple people pop in weirdly. Um, I've seen some weird movement. So it's like not bad enough definitely not bad enough for me to like write a review about how buggy it is let me put it that way i it's been fine like it feels like any huge scale game it has normal amount of bugs evan just said he had a guy get stuck in a doorway they couldn't get out of he was stuck in the room i had that happen as well actually just yesterday but i just reloaded my save and the person was gone okay so so you know the in these reviews that I've been watching, I would say that I su- surmise the experience that people are having on the bugs front to be uh, the base consoles is like. It seems like the consoles are fucked. And 
you know me, PC Master Race, I don't give a fuck. Um, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I don't even think, like, th- this game doesn't even need to be on consoles. That's from my perspective, he, right? Honestly, if, even on, like, yeah. a 3090 with, like, the best PC you could build right now, people can't even really run it on the back settings. Like, yeah. this is definitely a PC game that they ported to consoles and not the other way around, I feel from like. what I've seen, the Series X and the PS5 are actually okay. I mean, but I the think other... they would be because they have the right hardware to run it on, on high-ish. Are just a total shit show. Yeah. Um, so what, okay, so what, first real quick, what I will say for those who are listening, especially those who have messaged us about it, if you have... If you do not have a new console from the new console gen, right? If you don't have an Xbox Series X or PS5, the Series S did okay from the reviews I was watching, but you should expect it to be like 30 frames per second capped. I don't think you should expect that it's going to be 60 frames per second on the Series S. The Series X and the PS5, if you've got one of those, if you're one of the lucky few, um, it looks like you'd be you'll be okay and you'll be you'll have you'll have a good experience on those consoles. And what, how would you, what would you classify your PC as? Like, uh, um, my graphics card is five years old. My, the rest of my PC is nine years old, but it was literally, it was like the top end nine years ago. Um, and I'm running the game on high mostly and it goes up to ultra. I'm running it on high mostly and I'm getting between generally between 30 and 50 FPS, sometimes down to 20 um in the rain mostly but in in like the parts where it matters like the gunfights and the like scenes where i care about my fps being good that i it's you it's fine and that's what matters to me right like obviously i would like to be playing the game at 60 to 120 fps but honestly it has felt pretty smooth for being like between 30 and 40 fps most of the time so I would feel like the the parts you'd really care about the FPS are some of the action sequences. Yeah, and that's been fine for me. Honestly, it's been running fine. The parts where I've had the worst FPS are like when I'm driving around the city and it's raining. That was that was fucking bad. That went down to like okay. twelve FPS, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, some people were even saying uh, along the lines of what you said that even the high end PCs struggled to kind of really blow it out of the park yeah uh, to, to run the fun. game on like a 3090 with the new processors and everything with ray tracing on because i don't have ray tracing and uh on ultra with everything i don't think people are getting over six they're getting like 60 ish fps maybe on like the toppest end computers that exist right now <laughs> do you think they should have delayed it more no okay i think it's fine th- i think it's in a perfectly releasable state honestly okay so for your experience was, yeah, you did experience. But, but remember, right? I don't give a shit about consoles, right? If I if I no, cared no, no, about right, right, like right. consoles, then I would probably say yes. Like if I'm a kid on an Xbox trying to play it, and I literally can't play, of course I would say yes. It should have been delayed more. But for me with the no, PC, right. like I think it's fine. From your yeah, it, it's just worth. Uh, you play more of these games to kind of give a kind of perspective perspective on what i guess you expect out of games like this because you essentially just communicated a fluctuation at points between like in the tens of frames per second in a really bad scenario and then up to like 50 so like that's a big that's a big range you know um which could just imply that like if they had more time they could tighten that range i, to I don't think so i don't think they could not on i mean my computer is not the spec i'm like at or below the recommended specs for the game so you're at or below. Okay, okay. So you're below the specs they recommend for the game. Or I'm, like, right around. I'm above the minimum, but I'm, like, right around, if not below the recommended. Okay. So you, uh, that experience, you would say, is still worth what? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this game is way less buggy than what I would describe as, like, the really buggy game experiences I've had. Like, okay. the, when The Witcher 3 came out, I think it was way buggier than this. Actually, Evan, Evan in the chat can confirm or deny that, but I think that is the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evan actually in the chat is asking what the next gen update does. I don't know exactly what it does, Evan, but I know it is important um, and that it does change things. It, I mean, yeah, you see stuff on the base Xbox. This is a whole other interesting conversation that maybe we can have another time surrounding the fact like this. This game was extremely successful with eight million copies pre eight million pre order copies. Uh, they released actually a statement saying that they were basically profitable on day one. It was they the most concurrent players on Steam ever. Over a million concurrent players playing Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. 
uh no it's it's crazy um but i i gotta think the reason you support and release it on ps4 and xbox one is to help those numbers right there's 170 million of those two consoles out in the wild yeah i mean it makes sense right to try and do it um it just does not seem to be up to snuff for that that kind of release and maybe they should have and I understand they want to launch on everything simultaneously, but there is always the option of launching on PC and then and then releasing on consoles later. I don't know. Um, I mean, I, like I said, from my perspective, it's fine because it runs on PC. Evan has a way worse PC than me, and he was even able to run the game on like low with everything off at like thirty ish FPS, twenty to thirty. But he actually borrowed our friend's graphics card, and now he's in better shape. <laughs> no, so cool. That's that's. Uh... Yeah, I guess from what you're saying, um, I think that if if you're listening to this podcast and you find some of those, like, I I don't know, from my perspective, interacting with those systems and everything, while seeming like kind of overwhelming and intimidating at times, that sounds really cool. The hacking systems sound really cool. I mean, the the mastery path in this game is fucking crazy, right? Right. Like, Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's so, so rare and so hard to do to have such a, such a well robust and in-depth mastery path on a single player game you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like that's if you're if that's what you're looking for this sounds like it is but if you're on those original consoles either wait a few months and see if they release an update i actually i said i was going to give away a copy yesterday but considering that our audience is primarily console and not next gen console they said hey how about you wait until it's good fair (laughs) I um yeah basically I would say if you have a system capable of playing the game you should 100% and it sounds this kind of game sounds appealing to you you should 100% buy it even just like even just the part before the title screen was so fun like that could that was like 8 hours that could have been a whole game dude and that would have been a fun whole game <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, we have Evan in the chat for those who are listening. This might be beneficial. He says, my five-year-old 960 was doing That's fine. That's a GTX 960. It's an NVIDIA graphics card. My take is that it was a fully playable game. It just wasn't a fully enjoyable experience. It still would have been a great time, no doubt. So, yeah, if you're if you're looking to really get immersed uh, to the max, you may want to wait depending on whatever your setup is right now. But if you have a good setup, the people with a good setup seem to be – I've been a good. I don't see any of the like really crazy like the things you mentioned. I guess that that still those hiccups can still happen here and there. But I haven't seen like, damn dude on the PlayStation on the PS4 and the Xbox One videos. They I'm not even joking. You I've seen PlayStation One games with like better graphics where they like <laughs> they tank everything just totally tanks. They have like one solid square for a face and stuff. Like it's bad. That's so funny. It's bad. But um, yeah. Anyway, Evan posted a meme in uh in our personal discord but hopefully he will post it again maybe here i will show it on stream right now but uh <laughs> this right. is i hope you're looking at the stream i'm ready i'm ready for this I'm this ready. is ridiculous this wait can you yeah you can see it okay that meme chat i can't believe how that looks yeah my twitch chat is so your twitch is delayed, delayed. It's okay you'll Freaking see it soon Freaking twitch so was Cyberpunk, while I'm waiting for that meme to come up, was Cyberpunk worth the wait? Uh, you mean like the delay? Or the wait from when it was announced? <laughs> Holy shit, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> you should see this on YouTube, guys, if you haven't seen this yet. Man, shit, maybe we need to throw that on Instagram. <laughs> Damn, that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Keanu's not looking awesome right there. No. <laughs> that podcast thumbnail, that should be it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, from the delay perspective, just how, you know, did it meet your expectations? Well, so I didn't really have any expectations, and that may be one okay. of the reasons I'm enjoying it so much. Like, I haven't been, like, waiting for it to come out. Like, Evan, for example, loved The Witcher 3, played the shit out of The Witcher 3. This was, like, a fucking huge deal for him, right? And he has a lot to compare it to with having so much experience with The Witcher 3. I don't have that. Like, I churned on The Witcher 3 because I was too ADD for the open-world experience it provided. And third-person games just aren't aren't my thing, generally. Yeah. Um. So... For me, I just 
like yeah, decided to did. buy it, and I was like, this game looks sick, and it well, it's sick for for me. It's great for me. It's definitely I it is shaping up to be one of the my one of the most interesting like deep games I've ever played for sure. I don't know if it, I would say it's one of my favorite games I've ever played. We'll see about that. Um, just because. I feel like my favorite games are a different sort of experience than this. It, it's weird because this doesn't even feel like a single game, right? It feels like I've already played like 10 different games and that I'm like constantly sure. playing a bunch of different games. I'm playing like a hacking game one minute, then I'm playing like a dialogue game the next minute, and then I'm playing like a driving game the next minute, right? Yep. And a shooting game the next minute. So. No, it's true. It's crazy. The amount of, the amount of stuff in that game is insane. Yeah, I for me yeah. it's definitely lived up to the hype. I think so far. Yeah, it's uh, well, there. There are so many conversations that surround Cyberpunk uh, around the development, around the release, may, now around the technical issues. Uh, I, I'll also say I feel like some people are just being like, they, they, they you know, it's something's got a lot of hype and it's doing well, and so some people just want to like shit on it. I agree a hundred percent. One of my friends told me that he like has a friend who worked on The Last of Us Two that was shitting on Cyberpunk, and I'm like, maybe they're just jealous. <laughs> like, like I, yeah. I think there are a lot of people who just wanted the game to fail because it had so much hype that, and they had yeah. such high expectations that it was impossible for the game to meet them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I just, oh, let me say one more thing that. For- Evan just remind yeah, me of I made a concerted effort and I did this exact same thing with Bioshock Infinite as people may know my favorite game of all time um, which is to have zero spoilers going to the game I've I, the only thing I watched before playing the game was the E3 reveal from like whatever five mm-hmm. however long ago that reveal was that is the only content I consumed about the game read or watched about the game until I started playing it no that's yeah, that's that's. I don't know. I feel like that's the way to go if you really want to. I agree. And experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go. Go. No, it's crazy. I just watched the gameplay trailer that they released. That Sean told me had a narrative spoiler in it, and at, the narrative spoiler in the game trade trailer doesn't happen for like ten hours. Really? It was so bad. I can't believe they put that spoiler in the trailer. Honestly, if oh, anyone actually, is here, if anyone's here and yeah. has not watched the gameplay trailer and wants to play the game, do not watch the gameplay trailer. Like, it's crazy that they they spoiled this thing. I, I understand why, because there's so much game left after you get to that point. But still, like, I would have never said that. It's like the first big reveal of the game, and they spoiled it. That's what I, – I actually do remember seeing articles about that, people saying that. Like, wow, I can't believe they put that in the – It's in fucking the... crazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, well, I, I guess I – like I said, I don't. we could ramble on about these other things surrounding <laughs> Cyberpunk for a while, but I do have other – errands i need to run before 8 p.m so you guys are going to have to wait until another time i'm serious there's so much stuff especially as like time goes on a little bit and some of these like surrounding conversations evolve a little bit it might be interesting to talk about some of there's also rumors that they're going to eventually add some sort of multiplayer content so that would be crazy too so yeah you just need me just i'll just drop in while you hack stuff I don't mind being or some people. sort of like GTA like heist style thing right, like right, that. Right, I right. think they'll. That, I oh. imagine that's the kind of content they would add. And if they did that, that would be so fucking fun. Because the honestly, and I didn't say this, but this is a great thought to end on. The sandbox of this game is one of the most fun sandboxes I've ever played in any game of the uh, like any first person game by far. Just the amount that you can interact with that sandbox dude, is crazy. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, cool. So cool. hopefully, if you're listening, you got a solid glimpse. I thought that's that was pretty solid, based off of the reviews I was listening. You know, they say whatever. It's pretty. It looks good. Wow, I can't believe it. But you really got an in-depth breakdown of some of the systems that are into this game, and that can be. I I don't know. I I actually a lot of the stuff Skyler talked about there sounds interesting to me. Um, yeah, not, I have literally played three fucking games of, of rocket league this week that's it oh no <laughs> i'm so busy at work so um, you played a lot of games of hollow lens though <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah i'm hollow lensing it up baby mm. okay but yes hopefully you guys got a great breakdown there if you uh want to see some of our breakdowns of our other games because we do talk about where other can games, people find uh, us including among the fog <laughs> you can find us and those you can get links to those experiences by going to our website koalaentertainment.com there you have a link to all our social media and our podcast. So 
you can see all the uh, previous episodes that we've talked about. You know, if you're into Among Us still, if you're excited about this airship, we talked about Among Us, Fall Guys, yeah, Valorant, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> yeah, so um, check us out there. Follow, Join our Discord to get the first, the latest and greatest news about the games in studio. Uh, the studio's been heads down working on stuff uh, this, this month. Hopefully, we'll have more to share on that eventually here soon. Join the Discord for memes, Evan says, especially if you want some good cyberpunk memes. They're coming their way. Evan will yep. provide them. Uh, please consider also supporting us on Patreon. You get a ton of perks. Patreon. Basically free merch, free stickers. You get in the credits of our game after six months if you're the $10 tier. All kinds of good stuff. And it helps support the studio and studio ops. We obviously greatly appreciate it. Also, if you're listening, oh, for last uh, 25% off sale going through December on all our merch. So check that out too. Check out that big butt koala. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Big butt koala or bust. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you for it. listening. Thank you for listening, guys. Until next time, we'll be back next Wednesday uh, for a special episode. That's right. See you we'll later. See you Shout out to all of our Koala Manjaro subscribers, especially I Got Your Potatoes, Marcus the OK, and Sand Squid. Thank you guys so much for your unbelievably generous support. And to all our Koala Tacular subscribers, thank you as well. If you'd like to join us on Patreon, I know that you get a ton of stuff with your benefits. You can find all the information following the link in our bio, wherever you're at. Go to our link tree, go to patreon.com, search KO Koala Entertainment. There you can find the multitude of benefits that await you when you subscribe. Thank you again so much.